Good morning, everyone, and wonderful to have you with us this morning. I'm Anton Sayalan, the Chief Evangelist for Luminary Learning Solutions, and I will be the voice of the webinar this morning. Welcome to the Reset and Go webinar series in anticipation of getting back on our feet and into our seats. Setting the right precedence is important and at the risk of being repetitive. Here is our disclaimer. We are not here to discuss the obvious. We are not here to dissect the impact. We are here, however, to contemplate the way forward. This objective and core for our series consisting of 13 sessions panning out over the next two weeks. So before we commence in a few minutes, let's dive into some of the house rules. If you do wish to ask a question, please feel free to use the chat option at any point during the session. Similar questions will be clubbed together. The format of the webinar is 40 minutes of discussion followed by 20 minutes of Q&A. And there will be a summary to aid those joining this webinar at various points. The topic for the session this morning. Getting people back to work. How to reorient them and ensure they're productive fast. Well, alluding to an analogy from Dave a few days back. If you do meet with a road accident and spend time in hospital in intense recovery. And come time to go home. You still must get back on the road to do so. Yes, you may be cautious in doing so. Nevertheless, you do need to get back on the road. In that sense, it's inevitable that we are all bound to get back to work, albeit cautiously. Today, our discussion gravitates around the transitioning back and gearing up for productivity. Our guest this morning, Imani Pereira, Head of Learning and Development, John Keels Holdings. Dafanaika, Chief Human Resources Officer, Hydromani Knit Cluster, Kashal Mendes, Human Resources Director, Pizza Hut and Taco Bell, Governing Council Member, SLIDA. Our host this morning is Varun Chandramohan, who is a Luminary Learning Solutions Trainer and also an Assistant Manager Human Resource at Cloud Solutions International. Behind the scenes again today is Mr. Vidusha Nathavidarna, founder and destiny architect of High Five Consultancy and Luminary Learning Solutions. Thank you everyone for joining in and Varun, over to you. Thank you very much, Anton. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it is Wednesday, the 22nd of April. For those of you who are keeping account, we are on our third episode of the webinar series Reset and Go by Luminary Learning Solutions. And what a session we have in store for you today. We're going to be talking about getting people back to work, how to reorient them and help them become productive fast. Joining us today is our wonderful co-host, the one and only Anton and our three amazing panelists who've gone on to achieve great things in their respective careers. Chamindra, Imani and Kaushal, welcome and thank you for joining us. Um, yesterday's conversation revolved around being productive, working from home and the challenges um, of working from home. And I would like to pick this up from where the series left off yesterday. A lot of things have changed in the last four to six weeks, hundreds and thousands of employees who went to work every day have now exclusively worked from home for over a month. So my question to the panel is, what were some of your observations during the last four to six weeks? What worked? What didn't work? What were some of the key learnings? Um, maybe we can start with Chamindra and, and, and kind of take it from there. Uh, thanks, Warren. I think uh, one of the things that uh, we, uh, we know and we learned that we are at we are successful as our marketplace so when our market closed uh, and it's not active anymore and the fact that our employees understood that uh, from the bottom up uh, helped us uh, communicate things better to them as to what's happening so ours is a i represent the apparel industry and ours is an industry 
that uh, has gone through certain uh, seasonal peaks and valleys over the period. And yes, uh, there have been uh, the, the shop flow also would get affected economically when that happened. So during those peaks and valleys, we have been transparent and visible with everybody as to what's happening in the marketplace. So with this changes also, it was uh, easier to communicate what's happening in the marketplace because we maintained that transparency and visibility with everybody. Uh, so the market closes, we, we are no longer in active business is something that our employees understood. Um, okay. And the other thing is unlike some industries uh, who can move into a better work from home environment uh -huh. uh, for manufacturing, it's not the same. So yes, we've had uh, certain challenges in certain job roles uh, when when uh, smoothing it out into into that aspect. Uh, and one of the things that I personally observed was uh, the fact that uh, if you are mindful as to what's happening, uh, right. you have a better hang of it. Uh, for example, sometimes everybody expects certainty even when nobody can give you certainty. So right. so that you accept things as now and adapt and learn and go forward with it is something uh, that is very important and that can be practiced at all levels. So the fact that uh, across I mean, we have an organization that's like in Sri Lanka about 20,000 and different levels of hierarchy, but that mindfulness at different levels helps it make the decisions on the go. Yeah. So, so that helps because otherwise asking for certainty when it's not possible is, uh, is, is a no brainer for me. So, yeah. Well, that's that's quite in. Uh, that, that's quite insightful. Imani, do you have any thoughts, um, uh, from your observations, what, what you noticed and things that uh, you learned? Yeah, uh, well, uh, good morning everyone and it's lo lovely to be here. So um, actually um, from what Kaminder was saying in terms of uh, communication, I think that's one of the key things in terms of uh, making it work right. And I think one of the things that uh, we did from the onset was to keep everyone informed in terms of uh, how this was impacting us. Ours is a diversified group, as you know, and so uh, how it impacts one business and how it impacts another, it's uh, completely different. But keeping uh, everyone uh, uh, informed as to what was happening, how it's impacting us, uh, what uh, and also some things uh, that were happening was not something that anyone could say will manifest to be like this so it will, right. will become the outcome was was not very clear so at a time like that communicating and being in touch with your people is something that's very important and i think uh, that really worked for us so that when we had to sort of work out certain decisions making um, with working from home etc people were uh, were receptive of it and they uh, they were able to adapt to it uh, a little more faster than we we anticipated even. So yes, it, it takes a little time for anyone to sort of work on it when when you've not been used to it or you've uh, not been accustomed to it, and especially when the industries uh, are so diverse because there are some industries, as you know, like retail who have been having their operation from day dot even with everything that has been happening. So uh, how, how do uh, how does an industry like that cope while uh, things are changing in the landscape of things. So those, are, those those were some things that we had to like look at and keeping people informed is was definitely one thing. And the other thing is to be mindful of um, how each one would take it. Uh, I right. think that is also something that we uh, we took some time to understand because individuals because it's not like something uh, you can sort of say yes, there's a start date to it and uh, there's an end date to it and we will work around the time and be able to sort of uh, be able to work on it within that time. So this because of the fact that it was a bit uh, fluid in that sense, each one uh, uh, sort of adapts to it in a different way. And I think being mindful of that was something that really is something we learned uh, 
uh, while on the go uh, that each one would take it differently and businesses also would have something uh, different to sort of uh, work on and uh, understanding that. And also I think uh, coming together, the collaborative uh, effort that we could, so it wasn't businesses working in silos, it was uh, all of us coming together to understand how does this impact each of our businesses and how do we learn from each business to help us as a group be resilient in uh, a, a time like this. Well, that's, that's really amazing. And uh, Kaushal, how about you? I'm, I'm, I'm sure you have some unique insights given the nature of the business that uh, you are in. But what, what's your thought? What what did you observe? What, what lessons? Byron, and uh, it's lovely to be here. Good morning, everyone. Um, so I can I can easily connect with Chamindra and Imani uh, on most of the facts what they mentioned. Um, but needless to say, on 20th, uh, when when the curfew was uh, announced, uh, being in the consumer industry, the, the organization turned upside down and and uh, we are operating in 70 multiple locations here and two other outlets so were happening in Maldives and the challenge was how to take care of these employees, how to send them back home safe. That was the first challenge and to ensure that they have the essentials ready for them to survive at least for a week or two. So from that point onwards till today, we have evolved a lot and there were many uh, tiny points which has helped us to get here. Uh, primarily, as uh, Chamindra Imani specifically mentioned on communications, we had flawless communications starting from day one. Uh, having, having, having a larger workforce generally being the management, we get to talk to them at once, maybe once a year or twice a year max. But in this pandemic situation, in this unseen situation, we ensured that everyone is been spoken every day because we, we got all people on WhatsApp groups and ensured all the communications what we send out are personalized. Wow. So the personalized empathetic communication ensured that from day one they were with us. So and, and what we saw was uh, even as a brand, as, as a product, how needy we are to our, to our customers. So the customer queries were coming in. So we dissected this entire scenario into uh, four, four areas. Primarily, how to care for our employees, how to care for our product, how to care for our customers. Finally, how to care for the community. So those are the four major areas we focused during this, uh, this uh, uncertain period, whereas our, our social behavior have changed uh, a, a lot. The consumer behavior has changed a lot. At the same time, uh, maybe the consumer, maybe the employee, the thinking pattern has changed a lot. So the challenge what we had was get them into a common frame. Uh, so as an organization, we ensured we maintained 100% transparency. Mm -hmm. uh, all the information that we wanted to cascade, we ensured those information were promptly available, swiftly available, available for my uh, employees, and we were honest and transparent about what we wanted to say. Um, so we had to close down the organization for about um, seven days because of the regulatory uh, background. But uh, the leadership, I would say the assertiveness of the leadership, assertive, it's not its not the leaders who are being categorized as leaders. It could be the shop floor level employees, it could be the, the, the operational level employees who came forward and say, look here, we'll start this. We'll, we, we will go out, we'll get the approvals, we'll slowly start. So we started with one outlet and today we are operating more than 40 outlets and it's just a month. And right. it's all about, um, and, and again, it boils down to the culture of the organization. So we had a great culture and within that culture, a certain set of a subculture uh, was developed and nurtured in this uh, uncertain pandemic situation. Wow. That's 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 quite insightful. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I've got an interesting question to throw out to the panel in the in the in the last four to six weeks. Do you see anything um, where you went? Gosh, I wish we would have done that uh, before. Um, was there anything like that that you noticed that that um, uh, probably an initiative or, or or rather turn of events or anything that 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 happened where you thought oh, we should have done this before. Well, definitely, I think uh, using teams 
Uh, I mean, we've not that we have not done it before, but we haven't used it as extensively as what we are using now. Uh, we, I know our IT teams have always been behind us to, you know, actually make use of it and uh, have been sort of uh, singing its value for a long time. But I think when when something like this hits, you actually you you have no choice. You have to look into uh, the ways in which you have uh, you may have not been comfortable before, and uh, then you understand that this is actually something that is much more productive when it comes to certain things. So. Uh, that's definitely been something for me personally also uh, where, where we have uh, whilst we have been using uh, it on and off to actually daily be for it to be the base through which you communicate uh, and also the other channels of communication because once what we found is for, uh, um, because people may not have uh, may not feel like giving you a call they would send you emails and we had to channel that influx of emails into other channels of communication from WhatsApp right. to uh, having chats on uh, Teams, etc. And I think that really worked because people are understanding that it's not because you, you otherwise you find your inbox inundated with mails and that's not going to yeah. work because that's not how you're going to be working. So here you're on uh, Teams for the entirety of the day. If anyone needs to chat, they can chat to you through it and uh, anything uh, more urgent than that you can channel on WhatsApp. So yeah, definitely for me that has been one thing. Oh, amazing. And how about uh, Kaushal and Chamindra? Anything, anything um, you notice? Uh, I would say uh, uh, technology, the usage of technology. Uh, yes, we were on technology, but all of a sudden when everything was shut and when you can't walk out of your home, you were put <laughs> tape in. Yeah, you got to operate your call center. You got to ensure that uh, your your orders are delivered and all that. So, uh, and and as an organization, uh, as, uh, uh, as a large organization, we we were we wanted to do have have um, work from home concept. We were we were practicing it, but not to the great extent. But this pushed us with no choice. So usage of technology in uh, in, in in an extensive manner because this um, situation has evolved our thinking in new business models in terms of using technology and to do things differently. I would say you to, to do uh, operations more Uber model when it comes to uh, could be a call center operation could could be could be um, could be uh, some of your supply operations. So it's it's usage of more technology. Then the other fact is employee engagement. So we are we, we we've got about 2000 plus employees and heavily engaged. But I would say the amount of engagement I've had with my employees, one one on one engagement I've had with my employees for the past three years versus the past four weeks is totally different. Uh, the amount of personalized communication, the amount of um, personal engagement, uh, it doesn't stop at the employees level, but it goes to the family level as well. It goes to the level where uh, the family members are being connected. It goes to the level where we talk to the families and tell them, don't worry, your kids are safe with us. So that amount of communication, I think we could have even done when we were operating in normal terms. So uh, the, 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 the silver lining in this dark cloud is that we've seen, look here, in a, in a condensed environment, if you can practice, practice this, why not? When you're in full swing, you can go and do it. So uh, those are the two things what are my key takeouts from an HR perspective. It's about uh, employee engagement and usage of uh, technology. Oh. Amazing. Uh, Chavindra, any, any thoughts? Uh, yeah, yeah. Add to that, I think uh, I definitely relate to what Imani said in terms of the team. So uh, the fact that those infrastructure was in place uh, was important uh, because had we had to go to get this infrastructure in place. I, yes, we haven't used it, uh, though our IT had been telling us to use it. We've been using it 25%, 30%, but now we use it 120% uh, maybe every day on it. So having that infrastructure in place helped us. And even when it comes to online learning, uh, we've, we've been doing a lot of online learning uh, on a Teams platform, live environment, plus yeah. online learning. So. Uh, we haven't used it as much before because we were always used to having personal coaching training sessions in office or other external locations. Right. So uh, the fact that we had the infrastructure of our online learning in place 
and now that we are building up on it is is a great thing because if not we had to start it from scratch and uh, going beyond technology and digital i think uh, the fact that uh, uh, the hr business agenda completely changed overnight right. so so the fact that we had uh, our uh, year close to the ground and that we were close to our employees we were the street smartness kicked in before the digital or technology could kick in in the first couple of weeks uh, the the fact that we had 20000 employees and we need to ensure that they are home safe had food to eat they would survive right. all of that before the technology and any analytics could kick in it has kicked in now but initially it was the fact that we were close to the ground and that uh, we had our ear to the ground that helped us uh, to to be a trusted uh, assurance for our, for our employees that's that's fantastic um uh, before we move into our next section uh, for those of you who are just joining us we are in conversation with chamindra imani and kaushal on getting people back to work um, and we are discussing about how to reorient them and help them become productive fast our panelists were just sharing some of the observations they made over the past six to eight weeks and some of the lessons learned and also uh, some of the hidden opportunities discovered in the process um moving on i would I would like to talk about the future. Um, realistically, uh, realistically speaking, rather, unless there's a vaccine, um, some talk about herd immunity, but but um, uh, truth be told, un until there's a vaccine, measures such as social distancing, regularly washing um, uh, your your hands for 20 seconds, not touching your face, etc., will continue. And we've seen temperature checks, distant. Um, uh, seating arrangements um, in office spaces and even blood tests be taken in the example of Emirates before boarding a flight. Uh, this could be our world for the next year or so, or maybe even longer. So my question is, what preparations can organizations take when employees come back to work? What can they do to help them reorient and become productive faster? Um, may I? Yeah, go for it. Um, I think the first one is we need to ensure uh, that, that the employees do feel uh, wherever, wherever they walk in to work is going to be a safe place for them. Uh, so that's that's primarily uh, because the, uh, from from the organization's perspective, uh, the organizations would say we, we, we talk about sustainability. The organization needs to be there for the employees to have a sustainable living. Yeah, so so it's it's by all means it's fair the organizations to start operating and requesting uh, employees to come join hands and and start operations. But at the same time, it's uh, it's not only not only the employee that we need to convince. We need to uh, prove that look that you're in a safer place. But at the same time, the families. Uh, the, the 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 truth is that for the past four to six weeks. Uh, I would say uh, four weeks to be precise. Uh, most of these employees have spent time with their families. Mm -hmm. The amount of bond what they've created uh, with their families is significant compared to their uh, relationships with uh, their families, what they had in their busy schedules. So now as a result of that, the, could be the parents, could be the families, could be uh, everyone is bothered about, is worried about their loved ones going back to an area where there's a high density of uh, population or high density of uh, workforce. Uh, so it's not only the employees, it's um, it's uh, it's the, 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 the families as well. So in order to do that in my organization, not only in Sri Lanka, but uh, globally, uh, one of the things we did was we started parental communication, the family communication to uh, showcase how how safe your children, how safe your uh, loved ones are at work. So that's that's one aspect. The other thing is when they come back to work, uh, their requirements, uh, their desires are could be very different to what they were four weeks back. Uh, they will be more, uh, they will be looking things in a more personalized manner. They will require a lot of attention. They will require a lot of validation. They will require a lot of support. So as an employer, uh, so I think that's the time where we need to be more empathetic. We need to deliver personalized solutions. We need to talk to them um, better than how we used to do before. 
and to give that emotional support to to start with to ignite this whole thing we need to emotionally support them for them to start their machines running yeah right anyone else on how we can help employees sort of reorient right from uh, right from what kaushana just stopped us saying to get their machines going so that's literally we need to get our machines going in uh, where where i uh, we need to get back so right now we working in smaller teams uh, right. in areas that we are allowed to and can work and as uh, kaushala very rightly pointed out it's not just the employee it's the family and the entire community that we need to demonstrate and showcase that uh, we are doing uh, everything possible to ensure that the the employees and the communities are safe when we operate mm -hmm. so so that's a huge social responsibility among on on our shoulders and i think uh, it's something that uh, the 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 fact that i said before that how closer you are to the ground helps you to make sure that uh, you can get this going and um, the other thing is there's a psychological barrier when they come to work so most of the measures that we put in place needs to uh, the, the the temperature checking wearing a mask so while it helps them to feel safe at the same time uh, wearing a mask and uh, doing a 8 hour job not on a laptop but on something more hands on okay. uh, is not going to be very easy True. Uh, yeah. so so we need to understand that and we need to ensure that to see so we are learning as we go when we work with smaller teams that's why we are looking at a gradual uh, come back okay. to work so that we understand how to make this uh, easier so that uh, it's uh, it's sustainable when we bring everybody back to work so um yeah so that's that's uh, yeah i i i think um, from what uh, chamindra was saying in terms of uh, getting people back to work what exactly is this back to work is it that they're physically back to work or uh, is it that the, they are actually going to be working on things that in the same momentum that they were previously? So for us, what it is, is whilst we have, as, as you know, since our businesses are diverse, there have been businesses that have been operating throughout, uh, irrespective of uh, what has been going on, maybe in different scale of things, but have been operating through. So they are looking at how are they going to scale their business to meet the demands as it goes on. Then there are businesses that because of the, the economics of the pandemic itself, right. how it has impacted each business and what does that mean to a business? So some, for example, there are businesses like our leisure industry where they're looking at uh, how do they sort of transfer certain numbers of people into another business to make them productive there. So uh, what is the sort of clauses that will enable them to do that within uh, the sort of um, uh, the higher the, the sort of industries that are available for us? So looking at things like that in terms of reorienting people to uh, sort of move into different areas and also uh, the work from home itself, because now what yeah. we've we, we, we are looking at is uh, sort of sustaining the work from home model throughout uh, with with uh, with minimum uh, sort of um, room for people to move into uh, office physically and uh, look at it only as an exception rather than the norm in terms of uh, going forward. So we are we are looking at working with pods a few. Uh, numbers of people in terms of teams who will come in if there is a need and work on it rather than everyone in the team being there so that if there is any chance of infection it will not spread uh, in the magnitude it could uh, if you had the entire team being present so looking at it like that understanding who exactly needs to be at office and for what purpose and then ensuring that that's done um, meeting all the safety standards and the sort of guidelines that a person needs to follow and then orienting people who will sustain the work from home uh, to be able to do it uh, in a way that they find that they are they can be as productive as they can by supporting them with the necessary infrastructure and things like that for example bandwidth issues things like that which we may not right. have had before 
we really need to look at now and that's those are some of the things so that security like uh, what uh, both kaushal and chamita mentioned in terms of having them know that at the back of their heads everything is being done towards safeguarding uh, their health and safety and uh, Warren, if i'm to add okay. to that uh, one of the things uh, that uh, we need to look at when we get our employees back at work and reorienting them during the time at home. Uh, there are certain other domestic responsibilities that would have evolved during the last uh, couple of weeks or the last month. So mm -hmm. we need to be mindful of that uh, because the, yeah. the responsibility that came upon them in the last month or so is not just going to gradually uh, it's just not going to vanish overnight when they come to work. So they would have had some domestic responsibilities. Plus, if the schools remain closed for some, some time, uh, then right. child care is also going to be something uh, that we need to look at uh, for our employees because uh, we do have uh, creches, day, day care centers, but in no way that it caters to all of the mothers or all of sure. the fathers who, who need child care. So if schools remain closed or uh, it, it's uh, extended further, then that is also something that we may have to have to look at when we reorient them back to work. Um, that's quite interesting that you brought up because we've uh, we've we literally received uh, so many questions around this area of coming when you, when you come back to work um, into an environment uh, which which uh, so much of uncertainty and and and, and truth be told. Um, experts the world over are figuring it out as we go. We are learning new things every day and and um, and, and and we are all doing the best that we can um, in the time that's given to us. So um, clubbing all of these questions together, what 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 do you think would be the biggest hurdle, the immediate um, um, hurdles that organizations or people might face, um, you know, in let's say within the first couple of weeks of coming back to work? Um, uh, given the uncertainty, given the uh, given that entire business landscape and, and the way of doing things have changed, what 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 are your thoughts on that? What do you think would be the biggest hurdles? Um, so if I'm just to add to that, uh, I would say that um, in terms of this coming back, uh, like I said before, uh, there are I mean, we have a, a whole heap of people from the younger generation of the millennials in 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 uh, our workplace, and a lot of them, for them, it is coming back physically to be there with their friends, to uh, to you know, to 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 sort of uh, um, res res resuscitate that sort of camaraderie that they were really used to, and get that worked on. So when we are taking a work from home sustains sort of. Uh, um, model in going forward we have to sort of understand that there are people who are waiting to come back but we are telling them no you you sit you need to need to work from home so understanding what that would do for to people in terms of uh, how it will work how it will affect their collaboration and how it will affect the the impact that it will have on work is something that we would need to look at and we are looking at it in terms of that like the communication channels that we were speaking on before, how frequently do you do you communicate and in what manner and in and how and also in terms of the types of business that you would have been involved in, because for example, if if you were used to being in one large team working on certain things in marketing, for example, uh, say in the leisure industry, you may not be doing what you were doing before. So even if you want to come back to work and meet everyone, you wouldn't have the same sort of uh, the the same vigor of uh, work that you had before. So working from home still enables you to do what you have. It could be research based. It could it could mean that they could be working on something of, of yeah. a project that uh, enables them to sustain right now. But it would be working from home. So understanding that people need will be working in a different manner. Uh, so uh, getting back may not be really physical, but getting back is in terms of your mindset also, in terms of understanding that you are now uh, sort of looking at what the future of the business is. And then for businesses that have been uh, operating in terms of uh, businesses like retail, you would have them looking at a different type of 
uh, um, sort of work routine that they would need to put in. Uh, how often would they sort of, uh, in terms of operations, how would they orient the operation to suit the consumer who is now going to be looking for different things at different times, etc., and um, enabling that as well. So uh, I completely endorse what Chamindra was saying in terms of how people working from home. So now if we are going to continue the work from home model, there are domestic sort of uh, issues and challenges that will come your way. Uh, you you can say I'm going to be working from home from nine to five, but that doesn't mean that the others uh, will sort of you. You can you can work on that with everyone else at home. So understanding the challenges that people will have and mothers will have and um, um, what how, how how do we work with this uh, challenge and and also in terms of understanding that there, there would be people who would probably have a better time in terms of a later time that they would work more productively because of the uh, their kids being at home and uh, being able to understand that so supervisors and team leads being able to have those conversations with people to understand what really works for them and what are the sort of specifications they're going to work uh, and uh, understand the limitations that will have that people each one will have to enable them to work productively. It's interesting. Uh, uh, I think Kaushal, you have anything to add? Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. yeah well, uh, I, I am fully um, in agreement with uh, with what Imani said. Um, if I give a, a different context to this picture from a very operational uh, background and, and, and an organization uh, from an organization's perspective, uh, it is highly labor intensive. How are we going to do that? So that's that, that's that's the position where uh, being in HR, being in operations, we all will find it really difficult because the reality is a considerable amount of uh, workforce in this country are not reporting to work from their homes general, in, in general terms. So they are boarded or they are staying in uh, rented places or apartments. So they, they are they are traveling from different places. So at this juncture, most of these people, I would say 100% of them have gone back to their home bases. The first challenge is how to get them back to your workplace in a safer manner. So you get them back, then reorienting them, getting them into that emotional commitment of the of the routine uh, operation while ensuring the necessary infrastructure is ready for them. Uh, the reality is that uh, if when you are running a, a larger workplace, the sanitization of the workplace is becoming key. That's that's very critical. So uh, so how are we going to do that? Uh, how are we going to ensure the the people who come in for the sanitization process are basically safe and and they are safe to take in and and then about could be uh, the meal supplies uh, when you are working with larger number of uh, people then providing meal itself is becoming challenging so what are your meal sources of your meals and how we're going to provide that how safe they are so these are some of the operational challenges we'll face from a from a from a from a shop flu uh, context, um, right. from if if you look at people who are working in corporate um, setups, uh, yes, working from home is applicable for them. Uh, but at the same time, how are you going to ensure that everyone is contributing in the similar man, similar manner, at least to a benchmark level? That could be it, it goes with your honesty. There could be people who goes uh, walks a mile apart and give 150 percent to the organization when they are in real need. But at the same time, there, there, there could be a set of people that who really, you know, just do things for the sake of doing it. So it's it's not the honesty, I would say you just pass the day. Uh, but from the organization context that you pay the hard earned money for everyone in the similar manner. So it's again the challenge on the leadership. Uh, how are you going to ensure that everyone contributes in the similar manner? So I think those are two of the challenges we will we'll, uh, we'll face in uh, two sets of contexts, which is operational and uh, corporate setups. Right. That's uh, that's quite insightful, let's say. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Kaushal. Um, um, Chamindra, anything to add? Uh, 
Yeah, yeah, Varun. I think uh, further to what Imani and Karshal both mentioned uh, in terms of uh, when we get them, uh, get our employees back to work, I think uh, there are needs to be met differently. So we provide, we have large cafeterias, big, uh, like, like a large number of transportation that we used. So we need to ensure that these meet a certain standard. And one of the biggest challenges that we have right now is uh, the set standard is not very definitive. So we would come up with our own standard, but uh, it will be like it's good for the country to have. Uh, I know there are a lot of workplace guidelines, operative guidelines that are that are floating, but uh, none of it really provides what the compliance requirement is. So when the, the benchmark or the baseline should be set in my view, uh, so then we can meet the baseline and if any corporate wants to, they can add more measures to it. So not having a baseline at the moment, uh, everybody would come up with their own baseline or, or the standard and not having a standard. So that that's something that we are grappling with at the moment, further to what both both Imani and Kaushal mentioned. Um, thank you, thank you, Chamindra, for that. Um, I want to, I want to kind of, kind of uh, step into um, talking about habits for a second. Um, at the end of the day, we are all human, and during this time, while working from home, there are a ton of good habits um, that can be picked up, um, like self-learning, managing your day and time, for instance. But along the way, you could pick up a few bad ones as well. And once a habit sets in, it can be quite difficult to undo, and you just can't switch back to your previous self. How can organizations address that or how can you address that and how can we help employees sort of reorient or rather recalibrate themselves? Um, maybe three tips that you could you could share or, or, or specific guidelines of what they can do to overcome that. Uh, Warren, if uh, us as an organization, we have a, a well-being model, so uh, our own uh, wellness model it's called uh, wonders of well-being or uh, uh, wow so that's something uh, that we have been doing uh, with our employees in the last uh, three to four years so it, it captures the health part the healthy eating the psychological part the relational well-being the mindfulness and the financial well-being so these uh, we've uh, dissected this uh, five key well-being areas into like about 70 to 85 key habits that people to practice. So in the last month or so, with all of our employees in different tiers, uh, with uh, WhatsApp, SMS, or just phone communications with Microsoft Teams platforms, we have been uh, doing this, uh, our well-being module, uh, the coaching modules being transferred into bite size or uh, some more distance learning aspects where we've been talking about these habits more. So I actually, when we started looking at online learning during this time, the wow, our, our, our wonders of well-being was one of the key things that we looked at in terms of taking as an online platform for our employees. So these habits in terms of healthy eating and uh, the, the saving, uh, so we've like just last week, we had a session on how to build your money muscle. Okay. So, so the so it's it's just like building any other muscle in your body. How to build your money muscle. So that has helped uh, us uh, to take some of these uh, healthy reminders into our employees, and uh, and also we as an organization has been working on these habits post. Uh, the, the coronavirus pandemic. So the, the saving habit, the healthy eating habit, uh, we've been working on the uh, well, wellness model. So we've just extended it during this time. And we when we come back to work, we will reorient our wellness model post coronavirus, certain certain aspects, but we will still go ahead with our main model and, and go ahead with it. So we have the well-being model in place so that that is like our business agenda for a healthy and a 
will the workplace when I say will the our employees has a. For example, we've spoken about how do you live without your salary for the next three months, even before the pandemic situation came about. So we oh, sort of looked at our employees savings or a secret account or a fund that they had it on a on a rainy day. So that's something we've spoken to and and activated with our employees. So that is in place. We just need to build on that. So we are already mobilizing plans to build that in place. Oh, that's quite interesting. Imani? Yeah, so um, one thing is I think in terms of uh, in terms of habits and what what could be perceived as a habit that you can you can sort of try and move out of is because of the sort of urgency that this has created because of the different work cultures, the work environments that it has created. You also tend to think that, uh, you know, uh, people are there to um, working from home means that their agenda is. Is uh, I mean limitless like they they it's not the usual 95 or the timelines are blurred and uh, you may forget it's a weekend or you may forget it's after uh, uh, eight o'clock in the night or five o'clock in the evening and uh, you would still give a call or you would still uh, send a message and expect a reply. But right. uh, and that I feel is something that could happen and is happening uh, when when you are working from home and when they're when uh, when things are not as uh, sort of structured and routine as it was. So being mindful of this, being mindful that uh, after 530 when you usually didn't call someone or you knew that they would be at the gym or something like that, that's the same time that you need to give to them uh, that yes, they may not be at the gym, but they could be doing their own workout at home or uh, they could be taking their uh, kids, um, you know, with playing with their kids because they have that time now. And someone who used to commute to work, say, had a two hour commute to work, uh, they have that time now and that time is theirs. It's not yours. Uh, so you need to be mindful of that. And uh, so those are some of the habits that can come in for, for, for someone to say, oh, yeah, I can keep call him now at seven o'clock uh, because uh, he, he would be up now and he's just at home, so he might as well answer my call. So that sort of thing, being mindful of it and uh, being being aware that weekends uh, leave for that matter still applies. Uh, and uh, if someone says that, you know, they are going to be on leave, uh, yes, let them have that leave and let them sort of uh, uh, make use of it. So those are things that we need to be mindful of because the structures of what work was and what those uh, uh, compliances were still is applicable and needs to be more. My, we need to be more aware of it at this point. The other thing I feel is uh, in terms of not comparing yourself uh, in terms of what uh, what you should be doing uh, at a time like this with others. I've, I read a very interesting article which said uh, during the plague, uh, Newton discovered uh, calculus and Shakespeare wrote King Lear. Uh, so we are all sort of uh, thinking, OK, what is the next best thing that I'm going to do during this time? Uh, I don't think uh, it should be like that. Uh, if it has it had just meant that you have rearranged your room and it is in a uh, sort of a Ling Lang sort of uh, Feng Shui sort of way that makes it better for you, be it so. If you have uh, actually rediscovered uh, that uh, your um, you know your child knows uh, more about uh, science fiction than you do, that's great. Uh, you know, so whatever it is, uh, it. it uh, I don't think that yeah, because there's a lot of information and a lot of literature and a lot of self learning that we do. We uh, we feel that OK, this is going to be a Eureka moment for me because of this time. Uh, so I think being mindful of that, that everyone will work in different ways in, in when it comes to uh, sort of this time period and how that will reflect at, to you as an individual would be different is something that uh, we should be wary of. That's 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 very very interesting and 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 on that point, I uh, thank you for bringing that up because recently on Twitter there was a thread about 
uh, a random thread that just opened up and 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 this person asked um, tell us what your psychologist or or, or or your therapist are telling you at this moment of time and 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 one of the most recurring comments was that don't feel pressured um, to achieve anything during this time because the environment is not the same um, and even though you 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 feel like you may not be doing much but but you are and, and just just let it be as it is and let it unfold. Thank you. Thank you, Imani, for bringing that up. And Kaushal, um, your, um, your. Varun, yeah, uh, I think both uh, Chamindra and Imani was very elaborative on those uh, bad habits side of it. So I've, I've got nothing much to share on it, but maybe on a positive habit, I will I will talk um, uh, two minutes. Um, so one of the things, one of the positive habits I've seen in my organization, the the, the crowds what I'm, whom I'm working with, is the the, the speed of service. The speed right. of service have been drastically improved over the past four weeks, um, and and uh, the, the the things which took a couple of days to happen uh, happened in a couple of hours. And at the same time, uh, being an organization, um, in, in, when you're operating in the normal context, there are some some sort of a bureaucracy. Uh, what we've seen in the past couple of weeks is your the, the organizations becoming less bureaucratic, whereas thing they 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 the main focus is getting people to work or ensuring your customer, your client, your consumer is being taken care of. So in order to do that, a lot of um, a lot of organizations are becoming less bureaucratic at the same time improving their speed. So the flip side of this is connecting to what uh, Imani said. When you're trying to deliver, when you're trying to deliver with speed, when you're trying to be less bureaucratic, people tend to you know, disturb people or try to approach people or try to get through to people even in non-office hours, even during their personal time. So that's that's a bad side of it. but. Um, but being being uh, organizations, I think uh, this is one of the best things what I've seen in the past um, couple of weeks. Uh, there's a saying when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. I think that's that's what we've seen uh, during past four weeks. Uh, there are a lot of situational leaders who have evolved in this situation, in this um, uncertain, unforeseen situation. And being an organization, I think our challenge is to ensure that they continue that a newly discovered uh, passage of leadership into the next uh, couple of months or years or the, the chapters in their careers. Interesting. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Kaushal. And um, let's 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 just uh, touch on briefly. I think I think we only have about eight minutes left. How about the managers? Uh, nobody nobody talks about them and, and they're human too, right? And I'm sure their uh, style of management uh, uh, might have adapted or even changed quite a bit over the past several weeks. Um, how can organizations prepare prepare them for for you know when you get back to work because you almost have to now start switching your style. Um, any quick thoughts on that? Uh? Um, yeah, so one thing I feel is um, in terms of just to add from what I spoke about in terms of communication. Uh, managers and the way they communicate and the channels through which they communicate. I think would be something that uh, will help uh, going forward because um, and how often you communicate and in what what ways. So, for example, if you've if you if you have been having a like a daily chat with people just uh, in terms of a stand up at work, how do you sort of convert it into something that is more uh, sort of uh, in person and one on one with people in your teams? Uh, and get them to feel that they are still part of uh, part of this team, and you are still very much in touch with them. So, um, so that that definitely will be something that managers will have to look at. And what we've done is we've tried to also help them or aid them uh, with uh, certain tools that will enable this. Uh, in terms of understanding. So for example, uh, de developing a learning video that will give a maybe a lighter but a more um, insightful side to what working from home can do uh, if you really get down to it and put some time towards it. So visually helping even a manager to be able to talk about, yes, you will have it have a more sustained working from home uh, sort of model and we will be helping you through 
tools like this, which will enable them to uh, sort of have those conversations with people. And also, I think uh, just being mindful that each one um, that you also uh, will have a, a sort of a threshold that you can take on and uh, being aware of it and being uh, understanding of or, or being uh, empathetic to yourself also and understanding where are the limits that uh, you will, what are the limits that you will come across and understanding those and being mindful of it. So for example, if if you're, you're going to be working with your team on some core hours that you will be actually working on, uh, spend those that time with them and then if there's time if you feel that you would work more productively at a different time dedicate that time for yourself and think that's what i'm going to do for myself so that sort of uh, breaking down or dissecting of what your work schedule was like and how you worked on it and being able to unlearn and being able to uh, sort of uh, do things differently is what I feel managers would need to be mindful. So it's rediscovering yourself as a leader, as a manager. All right. Any other thoughts on how 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 we can help managers? Uh, uh, Warren could be uh, one of the areas what we practice rigorously is recognition. Uh, because uh, uh, what is mostly unseen is the brunt uh, that take uh, that is taken by the managers in terms of putting things in place. So that's uh, that's unseen. So uh, what we need to do is we need to have more frequent rigorous level of uh, recognitions going throughout so that that will give uh, additional dose of adrenaline to all these managers to deliver uh, exceptional results. So that's one of the areas where we can strengthen their uh, their deliveries. All right, excellent. Um, so, just just in retrospect, um, thinking back, what 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 do you think um, when you look back? Was there anything that you feel that oh, we shouldn't have done it that way, or some 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 um, uh, in hindsight, what you thought was a mistake uh, during this last six to eight uh, weeks? Was there any any such incident or a scenario where you thought you could do differently? Well, apart from thinking God should never have invented the bat, uh, I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's uh, they're, it's, they're lovely creatures. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's yeah. I mean, I don't think uh, it's a matter of thinking. Um, uh, you know, I, 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 I wish this didn't happen. I, I wish. Uh, you know, it could have been different, but it's more like uh, in hindsight, what I would think is I'm uh, in a way these uh, what they say is when there's something uncontrollable, uh, you look for the opportunity in the difficult rather than the difficulty in the opportunity, right? So uh, so I would say that it, it is a matter of like thinking, uh, uh, yes, some of the things that you were used to, some of the things that uh, you you were very accustomed to uh, and you had grown uh, so, um, you know, sort of taken for granted, you need to have a recheck on it and uh, being a that yes, it happened is unfortunate, but the fact that uh, you are here in the here and now and dealing with it is I think what needs to be really looked at. So um, I feel I feel that it we we, we should, I, I, as a person, I feel that it's best, best looked at in that sense rather than looking at all the things that could have maybe been different. Sure, Imani, and that, I think I think we've got a couple of minutes left. Um, Kaushal, Chamindra, any specific examples? Any, uh, I think, uh, think Varun, in terms of uh, how the pandemic uh, has uh, affected us, I think our, our industry, when it happened in China and when we were fine in our own little island. Uh, when it happened in China, our industry felt it first uh, because our supply chain uh, got affected. So yes, we did make plans as to how to uh, deal with our supply chain. We came up with options of how, how when the, the supplies, uh, our raw materials from China is getting delayed, how we will deal with that. Uh, but uh, we did not make a plan to uh, when the virus, if it spreads here, what we will do. So possibly that's something that we could have thought about. I, I don't know, but nobody did. But then our, our industry felt 
the impact of the pandemic uh, before maybe other industries because we are directly linked uh, our, our raw material base is directly linked there so uh, we but we did not plan as how to sri lanka would affect uh, we just looked at our, our supplies so possibly something that we could have looked at but we didn't lastly it's my personal opinion uh, i i wish i wish if this pandemic situation never happened so that's my wish <laughs> and, I, and I want yeah. to go. Don't be goes away soon. But I love it took the bits the past four weeks. The amount of camaraderie which was built in, the amount of assertiveness which was built in, the amount of situational leadership which has come out, uh, the amount of unseen, unhidden talents, the amount of teamwork, the amount of suggestions, ideas coming in are impressive. I haven't seen them in my organization for the past three weeks, three years. So I, I'm loving it to wow. bits. But the challenge is how to transform this, how to incubate this uh, bit of learning um, when we get back to the normalcy. Yep. That's a wonderful thought. Um, with that, I'm afraid we are out of time. Um, so we, uh, we've now come to a close of today's session on getting people back to work, how to reorient them and help them become productive fast. Uh, I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank our panelists, Imani, Chamindred, Kaushal. Thank you so much for being with us here today. It's been a pleasure. And a special thank you goes out to Vidusha, Anton, the Luminary team, and to our audience who tuned in today. I'm your host, Varun Chandra Mohan. Thank you for joining us. Over to you, Anton. Thank you, Varun. Thank you, Imani. Thank you, Chamindra and, and Kaushal for your insight uh, and thoughts. I guess steering through changes, the new reality within an organization can actually reveal both new opportunities alongside its challenges, as we rightly heard. But as we also heard, we know there is work that needs to go in beforehand and everything or nothing could have changed. It is to our advantage, I guess, that we go in prepared and overcome these challenges and seize the opportunities in a meaningful way. So ladies and gentlemen, we hope this webinar enriched you in some little way and offered you a glimpse of what we can expect in the very near future. On that note, I'd like to thank H1 who have been staunch, who have got our staunch platform powering us from the get go and sum up at the helm and, and the H1 team. Thank you for toiling with us tirelessly to make sure that both the platform and the mailing platforms are covered. We do really appreciate that. Um, today you've turned in to the third of the 13 topic lineup and tomorrow we are with you on the topic of dealing with financial impact of the crisis and our panel tomorrow would be Samin Devir Singh, a private equity specialist and corporate trainer, Cedric Vijayagunavarzana, chief financial officer for the Silver Mill Group and Imran Furkan, CEO of Tresink Australia. Remember to log in at 9 a.m. tomorrow, Thursday, the 23rd of April. And a quick reminder, the video footage will be available on our social media this week. Good morning. Enjoy the rest of the day. Stay safe and stay productive.